Do you think your citizens that you represent be safer if everyone knew how to read street signs going down the road and they understood what the sign meant? Or do you think it's fine that people just take tests in many different languages? I, I believe that most of the citizens who, that I, in fact, I would say all the citizens I represent would encourage safety, but I do not believe that every citizen I represent is literate. And literacy is different <coughs> than proficiency. There are those, I, I grew up in southern Mississippi, and I will tell you that the ability to read the driver's license test has nothing to do with your ability to read a curve a curved arrow on a street sign and know which way to turn, which is why we have directional signs as opposed to simply English language. <coughs> the reason we put pictures with our words is that we recognize that there are those who may not be proficient in the English language, but who are proficient in understanding what signs mean, which is why Americans are allowed to take, to drive in foreign countries, and to Mr. Kent's point, why we honor foreign licenses when folks come to the United States. It is not a function of whether or not a person is proficient in driving, it's whether or not they are allowed to take a test in a different language. That usually speaks to a public policy issue of whether or not you want to spend tax dollars to write a test in a different language. It is not a question of whether or not they're actually able to drive a car effectively, which is also the reason NAFTA per permitted, although we've never actually fully executed it, we were going to permit foreign drivers from Mexico to drive in the United States because we did not believe that you had to be able to read English to be able to follow street signs. And so I don't think that that's actually an appropriate question. I'd not say appropriate, but certainly I, I don't think that that question speaks to my lack of willingness to have protected protections for my DeKalb County voters. I, I would have to disagree after 15 years of law enforcement and trying to communicate with people that cannot communicate the dangers that are out there for the law enforcement officers and the community. I just disagree with, and I respectfully disagree, agree with that, but just, you, just briefly, I mean, we got 11 pages county or countries that have official languages when you go to um, English United Kingdom Australia Bahamas a list of them the United States is not listed I just felt like this is trying to take a turn that it was never designed to turn mr. chairman it's not anti anything what we're trying to do is to assist in assimilation to our country our culture the laws that we have on the book for people to understand that we, we're not going to have or we should not allow to have states with inside states like they did in, did in France and everything just burns down. Where, where countries cannot communicate, law enforcement cannot go into certain areas because they cannot communicate. That's not what this has turned into, but that's what it's trying to be twisted to. We want the assimilation into our country. We welcome immigrants, and we have since we have become a country. We, We've always welcomed them. But just like in uh, the UK, where Jack Smith, the Home Secretary, stated, those who we welcome into the UK to work and settle here need to understand our traditions and feel that they are part of our shared national culture. They need to integrate into our country, learn English, and use our language. All this, I know we're probably about to move this deferred because it's gone much longer than I ever anticipated. What we're saying is, over 80% of the people across this country <coughs> wants this government and the national government to make a stand on English. What we're, what we're wanting to do is allow the citizens of this state to allow their voices to be heard. That's it. I just get, got a little bit upset because it feels like it's trying to be twisted into something that's totally not. And I just want to make clear that's not the case of this resolution. I know you made a motion. I know it was seconded. And at this time, I would support that motion. But um, I just, just hearing all this time, I just want to make sure that was clear. This would give the citizens of our state a chance to have their voices heard. And uh, well, any other the, questions? Before you, I have you, to do you've made the chair's decision much easier. Um, we still have lights, but I think what I had said earlier was I was going to recognize those that were flashing at the time Chairman Knox made his motion. Um, Mr. Kent, will you be able to join back with us when we reconvene? Will you be able to join with us when we, when we reconvene? I don't know what date that will be. Um, uh, there was a motion made. The author has no objection. Is there any objection to, um, and I've got two members that want to ask questions. Do you all wish to ask those today or when we reconvene? Okay, waved off. Okay.
Um, any objection to the Knox motion? If not, uh, we are, uh, and I'm not sure what date we're going to do this, but we're going to put this on a date. Uh, wait, uh, wait just a minute. For the members of the committee, I've got some subcommittee assignments. We're going to put this on a day on which there will be no other legislation to be dealt with other than uh, Representative Bearden's resolution. We may even do a special meeting today. So, uh, but we'll get notices out to you on that. Um, I've got two subcommittee updates to give.